With Leonel from Happy Tunes talking about boot fitting and look at this. You are like a doctor's bag. You've brought all these uh, little devices with us. Let's, let's talk about boot fitting and, and, and uh, what you're going to do with this. This is show and tell, right? It is show and tell. Absolutely. I love it. So we were talking about, you know, the, the, the first step is figuring out how the foot works. So um, usually it means actually manipulating the foot and figuring out flexibility in the joints, uh, flexibility as well as mobility and trying to extrapolate that as to how the foot might react to constriction in a piece of plastic. So the more flexible the joints are, the more likely that foot will take the constriction of the, of the boot and the more likely you're gonna be able to tolerate that tight fitting, race type fit. By opposition, I would say, let's take the arthritic foot for instance. Now that's a totally different ball game where nothing's moving, everything is very rigid and it is essential that we understand that and fit it into a wider fitting boot that's not gonna come into contact with any of the bony prominences on the foot for greater comfort. Uh, so that's done, you know, hand to foot. It's, it's tr actually manipulating the foot and uh, figuring out how it's, uh, how it's moving. From there, we decide to build a foundation. So in most boots, you have a footbed. It's a filler that comes with the boot. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of cushion that provides some sort of uh, comfort. But unfortunately, there's really no structure to this. This is all soft. We think of it as just a filler. So nine and a half out of 10 times, this will come out. And now it's a question of figuring out what sort of um, replacement we could put underneath the foot to keep it in that neutral stance where the ankle joint is nice and square, neutral, where there's a, um, a good platform between your first and uh, fifth metatarsal here. The foot, after all, is a tripod. We're meant to spend our lives on three points of contact. First mat, fifth, and the calcaneus, that big heel bone here. So a little bit like building a bridge, we need to figure out how to put the foundation underneath there so that pressure is evenly distributed between those, uh, those three points. So it could be that one has a healthy foot and a stable foot. At that point, it's really just trying to figure out is it a low arch type configuration or maybe a little higher arch configuration. Mm -hmm. well, this will just go underneath the foot and, well, that wouldn't work, would it? <laughs> wrong foot, wrong size. But try to match the actual shape of the sure. foot. This is done through what we call a ready fit footbed. Um, it has a layer of EVA foam that will be um, pressure sensitive and it will be stabilized with a plastizode, a plastic type material underneath it um, to keep the um, keep good shape to the uh, to the footbed. These tend to sell for about 50 bucks. You usually you know pick them by again the shape of the foot, and it's a net improvement over the filler that's in the boot, the ready fit footbed. Occasionally, quite often actually, we'll find a foot that needs a little bit more than that. Uh, it's a more custom approach, and then you go to the next step with either a semi custom footbed or a full custom footbed. The full custom footbed is the traditional footbed that, um, and I'm not a doctor again, as I said earlier, I'm just a hack, so I'm going to call it a footbed. A doctor would call it an orthotic. Usually we start with a flat blank. There's nothing to it. Usually it will have either a carbon shank or a plastic shank, something underneath it that uh, will react to the form, to the shape of the foot. We're going to heat this up and put it underneath the foot, um, try to press it either in a unweighted or weighted position, depending on what the foot calls for. And ultimately, from that flat shape, we should end up with something that will have the shape of the foot. Mm -hmm. This is a great way to go when one uh, exhibits distinct differences between left and right foot, um, or when we're looking for volume issues, trying to support the foot without taking any extra space out of the boot good uh, custom option. This is a little bit more labor intensive, of course, and will tend to range usually between $140 or $200 by the time it's done, mm -hmm. depending on the foot. There's another category that is fairly new, seven, eight years, and um, it's, there's really only one um, product on the market that I know that works well like this. Uh, this is a company called uh, A-Line. They're actually out of Marblehead, Mass. Uh, with some very visionary attitude behind uh, what foot health should be. Uh, and they came up with a, uh, a blank like this that will take two to three days to form to one's foot. 
Um, it's fairly substantial deep heel pocket, a uh, substantial arch support, it even has a little bit of a metatarsal bump built uh, into the footbed, which we are finding fits a wider and wider array of feet. Um, the nice thing about this is that if there's no distinct difference between left and, and, and right foot, um, you can get this semi-custom footbed and it's very easy to duplicate. So uh, if you remember I said, you know, when we first get together, we don't really think of it as a ski boot fit. We think of it as just foot health. How, mm -hmm. What is the foot doing? So it's very likely that the person who's going to end up in this footbed is going to get two pairs. One to put in their ski boots, one to put in their shoes. And then it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's terrific because the foot gets accustomed to this shape, mm -hmm. gets conditioned and strengthened, especially the tendon that creates the arch is going to suddenly get st uh, stronger. And you'll be able to get from your shoes to your ski boots without shocking the foot every time. You know, you're going to wear this all week. You're only going to be in your ski boots on weekends. Time goes by, and often the foot gets shocked with this new footbed. Hmm. So this is a good way to go for um, an all-day, um, every day, every shoe type uh, approach. That is what sets the foundation. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Right on. So usually, once we've got this, we have a pretty good idea now as to what, to, what sort of plastic, what sort of, of shell we're going to uh, match the foot to. And shells come in different configurations. Uh, I just picked this one here, for instance. This is a pretty unique shell. This is the, the full-on walk-up, uh, we call them in, uh, in, in, in the jargon, the jargon that we use in the, the ski business is a plug boot. Uh, it's very narrow, thick plastic walls. Plug versus lasted. Plug meaning that the shape that is formed to make that boot is fairly generic. Thick plastic uh, walls. And this foot is uh, ideally waiting to go in and being customized by actually carving or pushing out the plastic to the shape of the foot. Um, a boot like this will usually not fit, well, it'll never fit actually, nine and a half out of ten times. It doesn't fit the foot. It's made to right. fit the foot afterwards by uh, shaping it closer and closer to the foot. So, um, super uh, great amount of performance here. The narrower the boot is, the thicker the walls are, the stronger the boot is, and the more performance it will deliver. The comfort level is not very good until it gets worked. So from this, usually we go to um, the more retail-friendly type boot. They look alike, mm -hmm. but really quite different. This boot is known as a 92 millimeter last. 92 millimeter last means that in a size 26.5, which is the prototype that the boot manufacturer usually shapes first, the widest part of the boot, right across the, uh, the transversal arch here from first to fifth, is going to be 92 millimeters internal measurement. The North American foot average is 99 to 100 millimeters. Hmm. So somehow, Something's not jiving here mm -hmm. and needs to be worked. The high performance boot, little brother to this, would be something like this. Now, this is a more retail friendly boot. It's been shaped, it's more ergonomic, and that will come with a 97 millimeter last. This is what we think of as the high performance boot. It's, um, uh, it's, the, uh, it's a lot of the racers. Uh, we're not at that level yet. It's a lot of the ski instructors. It's a lot of the, hmm, it's a lot of the sugar loafers who ski a lot yep. on hard snow and want that close link between foot and plastic. But, again, 97 is too narrow for a lot of people, so you might have to go to something a little bit wider. This is a boot that is 102 millimeters, and it's uh, four foot last. Same manufacturer. A lot of the same um, philosophies behind it, but just caters and recognizes that it needs to be a uh, higher volume foot. Um, ultimately, we come to some feet that are just not going to be compatible with anything that's on the market out there. And then we're looking for the full custom solution. Uh, for that, we go to a manufacturer, a small manufacturer out of Salt Lake City called, uh, called Dela Boot. Della Boot is pretty unique. They're the only boots on the market that do what they do. They start with a um, virgin grade polyether plastic. This is the best plastic you, you can get into boots. Knowing that it is very likely that this, this boot is going to get literally tortured. It's going to get stretched, heated, pushed um, to try to match the shape of an actual foot. So the fitting here is a little different. It would be you and I sitting down, figuring out that, okay, we're going to need to go custom solution. 
We're going to actually map out your foot, take measurements from the calf all the way down to the extremity, and pass on all those measurements to uh, Dale LaBoot in Salt Lake City. They take them, they uh, input them into their system, and they're going to create a shell. They're going to create a piece of plastic that will match the shape of your foot. So it's pretty cool. The example I like to use on this, we had the, uh, two sets of these done. This is uh, a good friend of ours, a Canadian fellow, who uh, has spent his whole life buying two pairs of shoes, buying two pairs of boots, because there's enough difference between left and right foot. And in skiing, you know, it's th this is a challenge. It means that you always have a right ski sure. or a left ski on top of the expense of buying two pairs of boots. Um, so in this case, we took, he's got this, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it to the camera well enough here, but two very distinct, sh distinctly shaped feet. So this is his left foot here, super wide, square. And this is his right foot, which is actually pretty tradi traditional, if not, if not narrow, in fact. And based on his measurements, we were able to, uh, with Dale, come up with this expanded shell, um, 12 millimeters extra in width, um, versus the more regular shell, where we actually shrank the shell by 2 millimeters to adapt to his foot. So now, he's got the same left and right. He can uh, change, go from one pair of ski to another. Um, you know, his life has become a lot simpler. Right. Um, this has been a, a godsend for him. So there are a few folks out there who ultimately will end up with the Dell. So there are a lot of different options. Obviously, uh, <clears throat> um, you, you need to make an appointment because you can see the importance of this and, and uh, how in-depth it certainly can be. So uh, you need to make an appointment. Give them a call at Happy Tunes and get yourself the perfect boot fit. And we appreciate you coming on this morning so much, Lionel. Thank, Thank you, you so from much. Happy Tunes.